Good morning, good afternoon, uh, everyone, uh, whichever part in the world you are in. So my name is Samaikya Balguri. Today I'm going to talk about uh, zero trust architecture, which is a comprehensive approach to modern application security. Today we are going to explore a pivotal shift in the world of cybersecurity, which is zero trust architecture, with the rise of cloud computing, remote work, and ever-increasing cyber threats, our traditional security models are no longer suffice. Uh, so these are the contents that I'm going to cover today uh, in very briefly. Let's, let's drive there. So what are the core principles of zero trust architecture? So let's begin by recognizing that cyber threats are evolving faster than ever. In 2023, cybersecurity ventures reported that cyber crime costs would reach around 10 trillion annually by 2025, underscoring the urgent need for better security models. Traditionally, organizations relied on perimeter-based security, building a wall around their network and assuming everything inside was trustworthy. However, this model is failing in today's world of cloud services. Because we have remote workforces, mobile devices, uh, a Forrester report found that 82% of breaches involve human elements, often from internal actors who are compromised by their credentials, which makes our entire organization a zero trust even more critical. One of the reasons zero trust has become so important is the increasing complexity of IT environments. Okay, so that's where I, I'm going to talk about the point to traditional security versus the zero trust. And then I'm going to cover about the key components of zero trust implementation uh, and the strategies of it and the challenges we that come with the implementing because it's not a, a easy shift from the traditional security network perimeter security to the ZTA. So it, it's going to have its setbacks and challenges. I'm going to talk about all about it to, in today's with examples. So what are the foundational uh, roots of implementing zero trust architecture? The first and foremost thing is never trust, always verify. So what does that mean? Uh, you know, every entity, whether it's a user, device, or application, is continuously authenticated and authorized before being granted access. So when I say continuously, it's not like a traditional login system where you once log in with your username and password and you're done. Once you're inside the organization, any any application, any network, any server, you have to continuously uh, prove yourself, you know, by authenticating and authorizing um, you know, to access any information. In today's world, where 61% of organizations reported at least one cyber attack in 2022, Zero Trust provides a proactive def defense, right? Uh, then, So that's where I talk about the continuous um, authentication and authorization. For example, in 2023, there was a Verizon's data breach investigations report, which revealed that 80% of breaches were due to external actors exploiting internal systems, highlighting the inadequacy of perimeter defenses. So the latest DTA that I'm talking about replaces this model. It assumes that the threats are already inside the network and continuously verifies every interaction within the network itself. So, you know, then we talk about the micro segmentation, which involves dividing the network into smaller secure segments, each isolated from others. This way, even if a breach occurs in one part of the network, attackers can't move literally or laterally across the system. According to IBM, companies that adopt micro segmentation reduce their attack service by up to 70%. Now let's assume, uh, if there is an intruder into your house, uh, but every room in your house is locked and has its own access, even though the intruder can break one door, you know, the attack perimeter is reduced by a, a humorous person, right? So that, the similar way the micro-segmentation works in the world of cybersecurity. 
So, but how do we achieve this micro segmentation? It's using tools like VMware, NSX, um, Cisco, ACI. So these will help us uh, isolate sensitive resources exam like uh, financial databases or intellectual property repositories. So let's go to the next thing. Uh, the identity access management, right? Like whenever we try to log into a um, application these days, it asks for a multi-factor authentication. So we see that a lot, but do you know it's still 28% of the world's um, login systems? You know, you know there are a lot of organization, but only 28% of them implement MFA, which is not enough, you know, especially in the world where um, globalization and remote work is possible, the 28% multi-factor authentication is just not enough. While companies are actively, proactively moving to um, implement MFA, uh, but there's long a long way to achieve at least 80%. So Okta, the thing, uh, SSO company uh, business report in 2023 showed that 98% of breaches could have mitigated if they have multi-factor authentications. That's quite a number. That's like not having any security issues at all, 98%. Uh, so ZTA strongly encourages companies to implement multi-factor authentication. Uh, since I'm talking about MFA here, uh, I'll go, go a little deeper into which is the cornerstone of zero trust. Uh, you know, MFA is nothing but let's not rely on usernames and passwords anymore. Even though employees use strong passwords, 81% of hacking related breaches are due to stolen or weak or guessed passwords, right? Uh, so having MFA significantly, like I just said, reduces the risk by 98%. So MFA can be achieved uh, by many tools. There are many tools out there, uh, Microsoft, Duo Security, Google Authenticator. So many uh, companies do provide this feature of MFA. The single sign-on, on the other hand, prevents us from giving username and password in multiple places. So while SSO simplifies the user experience, it must be integrated with the continuous verification mechanism. This prevents uh, from exploiting credentials to move systems uh, with adaptive risk-based authentication to continuously evaluate whether the current se uh, session is still active. So. You know, I've talked about uh, identity access management, uh, multi-factor authentication, single sign-on, but we do need to have some policies in place, uh, which are called user po use policy enforcement points. Uh, so, so that is nothing but a conditional access policy where modern IAM, which is nothing but modern identity access management solution use contextual signals such as location, device health, and user behavior to dynamically adjust access permissions. For example, if a high privileged user suddenly tries to access sensitive data from an unfamiliar device, the system might require re-authentication or deny access entirely. So this is how a policy re uh, enforcement points and next-gen firewalls uh, ensure the security so endpoint security like, like i'm always like i always say uh, never trust always verify helps mitigate the insider threat and strengthens defense against sophisticated cyber attacks so never trust um the reason we say this is uh after uh, 2020 um the covid breakout um 80 to 90 percent of it companies went remote um, before that, the security was uh, confined to the perimeter and in a network, uh, monitoring VPNs, etc. But with uh, with the evolving re remote workspace, uh, we can never trust a device, even if it is an employee. It is not because uh, we are not trusting, uh, you know, as a security engineer, that employee. It is because we cannot trust someone who has access or um, if if an employee is compromised by an attacker. 
so you know in devices play a critical role in zero trust endpoint detection and response edr solutions uh, like crowdstrike and carbon black uh, continuously evaluate uh, device security uh, so you know always have your um, devices networks every part segregated and authorized for any new user so uh, this slide gives you a brief about how the traditional security was working until now how the trust model you know imp uh, was implicit within the security network and how the access control was based on you know if you are in within the network location if you are signed into it you are all good and then the network segmentation you know it is limited uh, focused uh, on the external perimeter and authentication once you're logged in you're good to use any systems and visibility of uh, you know the firewalls the traditional firewalls had a limited visibility for example whoever comes or hits you with a bad request those are monitored by security team uh, in terms of visibility but with zero trust architecture the trust model access control segmentation authentication and visibility are under continuous radar uh, and scrutiny uh, so nothing is trusted anymore that's what the architecture says so the trust model is no implicit trust and have the continuous verification um the access control uh, have uh, you know uh, like i just said based on the tools like edr or carbon black have uh, device state context and identities um, in there and then we have authentication continuous for every access request and then a visibility so in when compared to the traditional model uh, in the modern cta way the visibility is more comprehensive monitoring of all traffic so how did uh, the evolution of zta started you know if you have to implement zta in your uh, company it is not overnight right so you you have to start somewhere and you have to understand how it is uh, evolved over time so with ai and um, machine learning obviously uh, ai will help the real time threat detection um, and then blockchain uh, it will create the uh, decentralized identity systems like we were talking about the micro segmentation so blockchain will help achieve that and then we have quantum computing so for uh, it will help us uh, create a complicated uh, uh, encryption methods so quantum resistant encryption to protect quantum computing and etc and then we have cloud computing uh, which provides lightweight and scalable security solutions so edge computing is nothing but using um, cutting edge technologies for example uh, the development architecture of um, organization is moving towards containerization and segregating or micro segmenting everything so edge computing is nothing but using the newest infrastructure like uh, you know dockers containers kubernetes helms aws containers stuff like that um so i'm going to give some examples of uh, hybrid and multi cloud environments uh adding how those adds the uh, complexity to security strategies many enterprises use a combination of aws as your google cloud services each with its own security protocols zero trust is particularly important in this setup because it provides unified security controls across these different platforms uh so there is a company um uh, it belongs to fang a fictitious example company we uh, might adopt a sdp solution to provide secure access hybrid environments like zscaler private access and etc and then we have the cloud access uh, security brokers which is called casp many organizations employ casp solutions like netspoke or microsoft uh, cloud app security uh, to get this so let's uh, let's go into case studies 
uh, why why zero trust uh, is important. So, like I said, uh, from the Verizon's data, uh, it is um, it is identified that 61% of the organization has at least one cyber attack in 2022 after the a workforce went remote. Um, so, in real world, uh, you know, J.P. Morgan Chase has started implementing zero trust architecture, and many financial and healthcare departments have started implementing this uh, to be in compliance with the health, you know, protocols uh, that are followed here in the United States. Uh, Verizon's data breach investigation report reveal that 80% of the breaches were due to external actors exploiting them. Uh, so that one, and the, I was talking about the government agencies having significantly reduced insider threats due to zero trust implementation. Uh, you know, the I, I can't name the government organizations, but many are using that. Um, and then uh, from 2022, to 2024, the peak period where uh, the workforces went to from going to office to uh, remote and then coming back to office. So the co the complex shift uh, had a complex security needs, uh, and it 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 was through case studies. It was identified that uh, through ZTA, uh, the security attacks were reduced. So to conclude uh, my talk here, uh, I, I'm going to say ZTA offers an adaptive and resilient security strategy um, with our co complicated needs in today's world, right? Like we have so many devices, uh, so many apps to work with, uh, so many infrastructure to develop a module within the development uh, team. So with the complexity that comes with um, the infrastructure and everything, uh, the segmentation makes it easy. So, uh, and the zero trust makes it even more easier to secure your, uh, to end up uh, building a secure product and reducing the cyber attacks. So I, my talk here uh, would end by saying organizations should begin evaluating their current security frameworks and access how, uh, assess how zero trust can fill gaps in their defenses. Um, yep, uh, so this is my talk today. I hope uh, you all enjoyed it. Please let me know if you have any questions. Um, thank you.